Now friends, the provisions relating to the eco operator, e-commerce operator. That was the provisions are very simple, but friends, this is a very complicated industry. Complicated industry in the sense that now because it's a global world and internet like things where you can access the information world over, the content is available world over, it is like one world as one market or something like that. So in this particular situation, friends, there are few inherent complications associated with the taxation of the uh, transaction with respect to the eco operators and uh, uh, GST provisions has made some very good efforts to clarify and have the appropriate provisions to tax uh, under the GST regime. Friends, there are uh, uh, provisions relating to eco operator which are spread over in relation to different different chapters. But uh, now I'll uh, take up all of them together and uh, give you the full uh, review and give you the uh, full revision with respect to this particular topic. Now, first of all, friends, the e-commerce operator, the eco operator which we are trying to talk about is uh, having a broader provisions of section 12, section 14, section 52 that is your TCS provisions and the basis of charge that is section 9. To start with friends the basis of charge section 9 okay. In the basis of charge section 9 it makes it very clear that uh, specified categories of the eco operators will be chargeable to GST. So section 9 basically makes it very clear that the e-commerce operator is subjected to the GST. This is the first ever foremost clarification and it should have a GST obligations to be done. Further section 9 also makes it very clear the eco operator himself will be responsible. Supposing if the eco uh, person, uh, eco operator is not having a presence in India then it should have some appointed a person. If there is no appointed person there should be some authorized person. In other words there, there is uh, someone or the other who should be responsible with respect to the eco operator. So those basic provisions are already built into section 9 and it says that the uh, first like eco operator himself responsible then the authorized person the representative person etc kind of situation that means there has to be appropriate person for the purpose of the assessment okay then section 12 comes into picture section 12 basically says a very very simple thing that is basically the place of supply one second the section 12 the place of supply uh, sorry, section 13 with respect to the place of supply in relation to the IGST. Item number 12 in that particular point is the place of supply of the online information in the database retrieval system. Basically, it is called as OIDAR. This, uh, if there is anyone who is accessing this particular online services, then services shall be the location of the recipient of the services. This is one of the very fundamental clarification. The example you just uh, imagine. Supposing if there is one gentleman in India who is downloading a movie, who is downloading a movie. Okay, so this particular person is the receiver of that particular services. So for example, you think about Netflix, the Netflix movies are viewed by this particular gentleman in India. So uh, the place of supply of services shall be the location of the recipient of the services the recipient is already inside india so logically it will have gst implications in india the netflix server can be in use okay so, so i'm i'm downloading a movie from a server that means from the netflix facility now that facility can be anywhere in the world i don't know actually uh, when i'm doing that online surfing but uh, since i am my actual user is inside india then indian law says that you will be subjected to the gst in India because your place of uh, uh, supply of services is the place where the location of the recipient of the services, the location of the recipient, that means I am Mr. X, this Mr. X is inside India, so it will be chargeable to tax in India. Okay. Now the next clarification is under section 14. So section 13, section 14. Now section 14 clarifies that in such a situation where you are providing all these online content services and all that kind of situation which can be once again logically can be in all these kind of forms like online music software ebook or uh, downloading game music etc these are all uh, the pretty examples of the oidr that means uh, online information and other services etc so in relation to any of these things if there is any such supply if there is any supply this is section 14 if there is any supply of online information in that particular case uh, by a person located in the non-taxable territory so logically you just imagine that netflix in us i mean just uh, matter matter of imagination so netflix is in non-taxable territory so maybe you are in the america okay and received by and received by 
a non taxable online recipient and it is received by non taxable online recipient that means myself i am for example not i am just a common man in india and i am just surfing the web and downloading something and paying some 20 25 rupees for a movie or 50 rupees for a movie online content say for example okay or there can be some apps nowadays even if you go to the uh, apple store or if you go to the google store some of the apps are paid apps also so i am paying that particular money for that particular purpose okay so it is received by a non taxable online recipient okay so it is received by a common man in india say for example the supplier of the services located in the non taxable territory shall be the person liable for payment of integrated tax shall be the person liable for the payment of integrated tax i repeat once again shall be the person liable for paying the integrated tax that means that netflix that app provider will be liable for the payment of integrated tax in india that is one of the main point because your ultimate uh, person who is using this particular services is in, inside india secondly there is a major clarification with respect to your intermediary okay now that one particular point let me just tell you where there is an intermediary okay now imagine a situation where a netflix is providing the services not directly to the customer but through an intermediary intermediary is basically you can call him as a broker agent service provider kind of situations okay so intermediary is a very big word from the gst point of view lot of middlemen i repeat lot of middlemen in whichever form like broker agent uh, other service provider distributor online distributor content provider different different names can be used here so the gst says that intermediary categories okay so where in case of supply of online information has been provided uh, by any person located outside india that means imagine that uh, netflix outside india and received by a non taxable online recipient an intermediary located in non taxable territory i repeat intermediary which is located in a non taxable territory so now say for example a netflix in us now there is an intermediary this particular intermediary is located in a non taxable territory so maybe that intermediary is also outside india okay this is what the imagination of the law is look at this particular provision very very carefully is also outside in the non taxable territory who arranges the facilities for the supply of such services so my intermediary is also outside india but he is arranging for such facilities then such facilities if you are arranging or facilitates certain things shall be deemed to be the recipient shall be deemed so this person is a deemed recipient is a deemed recipient okay of the services from the supplier or the receiver in non taxable territory and supplying such services uh, to the non taxable person this will be covered by the taxation regime so if you are providing such facilities in other words not all the facilities if you are providing such facilities which are uh, specified in this particular provision then you will be subjected to the gst taxation in india as regarded as intermediary regarded as the recipient of that particular services okay however it is except a situation it is except a situation in other words all the intermediaries are not covered here all the intermediaries are not covered here except when such intermediary satisfies the following conditions is that absolutely clear in other words the intermediary will be regarded as in other words the intermediary will be deemed to be regarded as a recipient of such services from the supplier in the non taxable territory and supplying such services to another non taxable person he will be the intermediary the middleman will also be deemed to be the uh, recipient of this particular services except where and most of this particular except is very logical kind of situation and understand that particular uh, provisions also here the students can confuse that's the reason uh, let me go a little bit into the greater there the invoice of the customers bill invoice or the customers bill or the receipt issued or made available by such intermediary taking a part in supply of this particular uh, uh, services identify the services the question in the non taxable services so it is except when the invoice or the customers bill 
issued made available to the inter intermediary taking part in the supply identifies the services unless it identifies the services in the question as a supplier in the non taxable territory that means if there is a one to one identity one to one identity that these particular services are identified logically not used in india something like that only then it will become not taxable in india otherwise it will become taxable in india so it says that the intermediary who is receiving this particular services will be deemed to be the receiver except where this particular services are clearly identified the service in the question as the case may be okay now intermediary involved in the supply does not authorize or charge the customer as the case may be so if the intermediary is not authorized or does not charge the customer as the case may be in that particular case you will not be subjected to this particular provisions in other words the intermediary will be responsible for the purpose of taxation will be responsible for the purpose of taxation by default however he will not be responsible in this particular that means will not be deemed to be the recipient of this particular services if it is clearly indicated that here the intermediary uh, is not doing a specified acts one of the act is the intermediary involved in the supply does not authorize any delivery so put it differently if the intermediary authorizes the delivery i repeat if the intermediary authorizes the delivery then he becomes a responsible person if he does not authorize the delivery then he does not become a responsible person in other words the intermediary has a very very important role to be considered in this particular situation now friends let me give you the example with respect to the oidar services in other words this particular services how uh, the real taxability will be affected that you please uh, understand as i have already explained to you that oidr services basically or online content online uh, uh, services etc for example uh, downloading of music downloading of movies or maybe some online hosting services or whatever so these are all examples of the oidr services now in this particular oidr services as i already explained to you but i once again repeat friends that on supply of online information and database access retrieval services by any person located in the non taxable territory that means person who is outside india and the received by a non taxable online recipient received by a non taxable online recipient non taxable online recipient is basically my own self okay that means uh, uh, some my rather i am registered to gst but anyway uh, say for example a student a student is not registered to the gst so he will be regarded as a non taxable online recipient so in that particular case such a uh, oidr that is service provider will have to be covered by this particular pro provision and he will be subjected to uh, gst obligations under this particular provisions so if such services are received by non taxable online recipient the supplier of the services located in non taxable territory shall be the person liable for paying integrated tax on this particular services now friends on this particular front uh, let me give you some very good particular example okay now before i go ahead and give you this particular example friends uh i want to repeat one thing which i have already said uh, uh sometime back probably that if you are covered by section 95 that means section 95 eco operators who are notified eco operators who are basically this particular radio taxi motor cab maxi cab uh, accommodation in hotel etc all these people who are covered by section 95 eco operators for those people there is no uh, tcs provisions uh, applicable for them this particular oidr services etc are not applicable in other words these operator of section 95 they themselves will have to pay the tax as if they are the service provider so these people who are covered by section 95 they are in a unique situation these eco operators are in the unique situation now for example ola uber and all that so ola uber will come into this particular radio taxi category for them this oidr concept etc will not be applicable because they themselves will have to pay the tax as if they are the service provider okay now oida is uh, on top of the line that means uh, these people are something which are who are not covered by section 95 and now we have to discuss this particular oida okay now i want to take up 
one of the uh, simple example and the straightforward example supposing if the supplier of that particular service is in india and uh, receiver is also india in fact this oidr services are not covered only by this particular provisions uh, for this kind of logical situation see this particular oidr services here would says that the on supply of online information database uh, services by any person okay by any person uh, located in a non taxable territory okay that means basically it's a foreigner a foreigner who is supplying services to india this this is the situation which section 14 is trying to say so my first example which i am trying to take technically it is not covered by oida section 14 of igst provisions but it's an example i mean so because i want to explain everything uh, uh, completely on this particular front so if so service provider is in india and a service recipient is also is in india in that particular case it will be a normal taxation on account of the forward charge so for example if there is a indian service for example indian service provider like gana say for example jio music or say for example jio tv they are all online service providers but they are indians and we indians are using their particular services so they will have a normal taxation for them it is a normal taxation and no question of this special treatment ever coming into picture so those online services are of course taxable but say for example somebody who is outside india and this is the most important aspect which i want to cover it up because this is covered by oidr section 14 concept now there is someone who is outside india that means uh, say for example foreign service provider and that particular foreign service provider is say for example some foreign music company and that particular foreign music company is uh, uh, doing business worldwide and we indians are also using their music and we are also paying so imagine that one student in india that means the unregistered registered person in india is using their services and they are making payment for that okay so that is the perfect situation that they are providing services uh, uh, globally but their place of operation is outside india but the receiver is a non taxable person receiver is a non taxable person and this particular situation is straight away covered by section 14 concept i once again repeat friends because here the students are likely to do lot of mistakes okay so section 14 concept uh, okay i will once again repeat for your better understanding because some students are likely to do lot of mistakes here where this is uh, online information service provided by any person who is located in the non taxable territory so who is located in the non taxable territory is basically the uh, foreign person basically logically the foreign person or you can say person located outside india okay and received by non taxable online recipients and received by non taxable online recipient that is basically your student example that means unregistered uh, local indian person okay so in this particular case in this particular case uh, service provider is outside india service receiver is inside india but he is a non taxable person in that particular case section 14 will come into picture and it will say that this particular company that means uh, the company which is uh, providing this particular services will be chargeable to tax in india and forward charge gst will be payable by the service provider however if the same foreign company if it is providing some services to the uh, somebody in india but the recipient is already a registered person in india for example that means the same music but it is not used by a student in india but say for example some registered person in india registered to gst in india in that particular case there is a reverse charge mechanism in other words this is one of the perfect situation of the reverse charge mechanism so taxability will be applicable but the taxability will be in the hands of the recipient and accordingly it will be uh, chargeable in the hands of the recipient on a reverse charge mechanism basis and this is basically covered by reverse charge concept so this situation that somebody who is outside india and providing services to someone inside india to a registered person and to unregistered person accordingly the provisions are applicable i repeat friends in this particular situation that somebody who is outside india and providing services to somebody in the uh, somebody who's registered in india then the rcm provisions will be applicable reverse charge mechanism to the indian uh, registered person will be applicable that is one of the thing and somebody who is a non taxable person that is a student who is using this particular music of that particular foreign company in that particular case the foreign company will be responsible because ultimately this particular music the content has been used in india that's the logic of the law okay now the next example if the person who is providing this particular service is already inside india but now there is someone who is using the services outside india 
okay so it is something like export of services now for example it's a geo music now the geo music is an indian company reliance is an indian company and their music is say for example used by americans for example indians in america and those people pay to the geo so that will be regarded as export of services so in that particular situation no question of any taxability coming into picture because it is an export of services okay the next example the service provider is already outside india and he is also providing services to someone outside india in other words this is squarely not covered by any gst provision for example somebody who is in america somebody who is in japan so somebody from america is providing services to somebody in japan then there is no question of any india consequence ever coming into picture so such transactions are fully outside of our taxable territories and therefore there is no question of any taxability in any of this particular situation ever coming into picture so this is your uh, tax treatment with respect to uh, OIDR that means online services in this particular situation. However, the eco operator concept, this is section 95 and I once again repeat, the eco operator concept is a little bit of a different concept and remember that uh, the people who are covered by section 95, they are not covered by section uh, 14 of IGST, uh, the OIDR concept because in this particular case the operator itself is responsible as if they are the service provider. So you have to know that eco operator types which are section 95 types that is separate types separate treatment and uh, eco operator who are section 14 type they are separate treatment all together and accordingly the provisions are to be applied now friends the provisions relating to the assessments and audits very very simple uh, situation of this particular chapter but remember that the general uh, attitude in the gst is basically mostly the self assessment in other words it is like uh, trust based system something like that however the certain special assessments can take place in a special circumstances in other words there are different types of assessments uh, whereby which such assessments will come into picture only when certain situations happen so that that is a key to this particular chapter okay where the different situations where something goes wrong in certain situation then that particular uh, provisions will be applicable by default friends it is a self assessment in other words this is a uh, situation where maximum number of the people will be covered by this particular provision where you have to do self assessment self payment of tax and uh, you have to submit valid return valid return means in that the payment of tax also etc should have been made by the taxpayer and all that kind of situation the provisional assessment the provisional assessment will come into picture only where uh, the taxpayer is unable to determine the value so this is one situation where i'm uh, taxpayer but I am not sure whether what will be my classification what will be my GST burden in that situation I will make application to the officer saying that sir please uh, make a provisional assessment I will make the payment <coughs> whatever is required to be made uh, provisionally and thereafter the assessment will get finalized and when it gets finalized I will have to make the balance payment if any if I have to take the refund I will take the refund here in other words the provisional assessment in the due course of time has to become a final assessment and upon the finalization uh, extra payment of tax okay or if there is any refund that is also okay the summary assessment the summary assessment uh, will be done in a situation where the delay is not going to uh, uh, the delay of that particular assessment is going to affect uh, the interest of uh, the revenue in other words uh, uh, delay is uh, uh, supposing if this particular assessment is delayed then there may be a chance there may be a situation where the tax uh, authorities may suffer the loss of revenue in other words there may be certain situations that we want to do a uh, quick assessments or something like that and that kind of assessment will come into picture uh, uh, in this particular uh, section in this situation uh, one of the situation is something like you know where the goods are lying uh, in the warehouse or in the godown where sometimes the owner of the goods could not be traced or maybe that who is the owner of that particular goods sometimes by itself is uh, uh, in the dilemma or something like that yeah, such situations friends will come in this particular category in that particular case the person in charge of the goods will be deemed to be the taxable person i repeat the person in charge of the goods basically you can imagine maybe sometimes transporter can come a warehouse owner can come godown owner can come or maybe the goods are lying in somebody's premises uh, maybe it is not called as a godown but it is just the goods lying in somebody's premises but the real owner of that particular goods not able to trace but the possessor of the goods been able to trace uh, these kind of situations 
uh, will come in this particular category. So, in uh, this summary assessment, it can be said that the possessor of the goods will be the taxable person and the assessment will be done and the possessor of the goods uh, will have to pay that particular uh, taxes. Okay. However, uh, application can be made by a registered person uh, that um, I am the real owner of the goods and uh, uh, basically uh, there was some, some problem but uh, maybe I was not available at that point in time and I make a request that you withdraw your orders and uh, now the uh, identity of the goods, the ownership of the goods etc has already been uh, fully uh, uh, satisfied that means now the officer is basically satisfied saying that okay uh, previously I was not knowing who was the real owner of the goods so now I already know and now the tax on goods have already been cleared and all that so in such a situation the order can be revoked also such situation is called as a summary assessment and that can be done by the uh, authorities okay further the scrutiny assessment as the word by itself suggests the scrutiny assessment in order to verify the correctness and the discrepancy uh, if any that means in order to verify that the return filing documentation tax payments everything is done correctly in order to verify that things are okay things are into the order this kind of scrutiny assessment may come into picture and the tax authorities uh, may do this particular scrutiny assessment okay and uh, uh, naturally in case of a scrutiny assessment whatever the taxpayer is then he has to coordinate with the tax authorities has to provide proper documents uh, uh, information material whatever is asked for okay so basically the assessment is to be done with the intention to verify that the things are everything into the order the best judgment assessment the best judgment assessment is basically done with respect to the non filers of the returns or unregistered person who are basically covered by this particular section section 62 63 etc in other words uh, best judgment assessment is mainly keeping in mind the non filers or the uh, unregistered persons covered by 60 to 63. Now remember one thing, the non-filing of the return does not mean that you are not supposed to pay the GST. This is one of the fundamental concepts. That means if you are responsible to pay the GST to the government, you are responsible to pay the GST to the government, whether you are registered, not registered. So sometimes it may so happen that I am liable to GST, but I don't register myself. So I feel that, oh, I am never to pay the GST. It's not the situation like that. So these kind of people, the non-filer people or unregistered persons, uh, in a typical typical situations who uh, uh, may be feeling that okay I will not be liable to any GST no so law can catch you here so you people this kind of people can be subjected to the best judgment assessment and uh, this particular assessment can be done only in a typical situation of uh, non filers or the unregistered persons which are specifically provided in section 62 63 as the case may be further uh, when this particular assessments has been done Okay. Uh, during this particular course, 65, 66 provisions. Okay. These are the uh, basically the audit provisions. The audit provisions which comes into picture where uh, with the intention to verify uh, that uh, uh, the order documents etc. is uh, uh, already things are into the order when it comes to the taxpayer. Then the audit will be done by the uh, commissioner or the authorized officer here in this particular case under section 66 where the value is not correctly declared the credit availed then of course not correctly then the special audit can be uh, conducted by uh, chartered accountant company secretary as the case. Basically, they will be the authorized uh, person by the appropriate officers and they will be directed to do that particular special audit. So, two types of audits have been warranted. One, one audit which is done by the departmental authorities itself. Other is the audit which a uh, special audit which may have been conducted or might have been conducted by chartered accountant or a company secretary as the case may be. In this particular case, whenever there is an audit, then subsequent formalities will of course be there like audit report etc. has to be submitted by the chartered accountant uh, to the appropriate authorities and uh, that particular audit report subsequently can be used for the purpose of uh, any adjudications etc. That means uh, this is one administrative measure where the audits are permitted uh, in form of a special audits under the GST regime also. The powers of the authorities with respect to search, seizure, confiscation and inspection. I repeat, search, seizure, confiscation and inspection. These are mostly the broad powers, but these powers operate in a different different environment and uh, uh, hardcore basics of this particular environment under which they can operate and what are the reasons why these particular powers can be executed. Uh, that is something which is should be studied by a student properly. Okay. First of all, section 67, the powers to inspect, the power to inspect. Okay. 
the power to inspect is first level entry level power of the authorities where the input tax credit is claimed higher or contravention of the provisions of the law or the transporter of the goods or the owner operator of warehouse of the goods or the any other place uh, which have escaped the payment of tax uh, has kept his accounts or goods in such manner is likely to cause the evasion of the tax. So, transfer of the goods or an owner of the goods basically has kept the records in such a way that uh, it may give rise to the evasion of the tax. In that particular case, they can inspect that particular place. Okay. So, the place inspection can take place. This is uh, one of the power in these two circumstances. Basically, you can think about like there is a loss of revenue. Where there is a loss of revenue, then the inspection in such a situation has taken place. But the next level of the inspection is that say for example, there is a taxpayer and the taxpayer has secreted something. So, if he has secreted something, that means say for example, someone is hiding something somewhere. Okay. So, if that is the anticipation of the tax authorities and if they have a reason to believe, if they have a reason to believe that uh, someone has secreted something somewhere in that particular situation power of search and scissor comes into picture in other words the search and scissor power is one level above the power of the inspection where in case of an inspection normally the anticipation is not that somebody has secreted something but where there is some sort of a tax evasion and uh, there are some documentary things which needs to be inspected in such situation the inspection of that particular place logically should take place and uh, the more serious matter where things have been secreted the search and seizure power can be executed. So, sometimes you can be asked for a question in the examination condition, the power of inspection. So, you have to explain uh, the tax evasion point. If they ask you that why the search seizure can be conducted, then you have to explain that uh, somebody has secreted something and that be the reason to believe and uh, thereafter uh, they can go for this particular search and seizure operations. Okay. Further, where it is not practicable to seize any goods, the proper officer uh, shall uh, the proper officer authorized by him may serve an owner custodian of the goods and order that shall not remove or part with that particular goods. Now imagine this kind of a concept is there in almost every law wherever there is a search seizure kind of operations. Now for example, uh, there is a search in uh, some premises and there are some goods. Now that particular goods is uh, say for example a very very bulky goods. Now uh, or sometimes that particular goods may be what should I say uh some chemical items and that chemical items require some very special handling or it may be some explosive items you don't know because there are so many different industries and so many different situations which can come into picture so that uh, gst authorities will be little bit scared logically to handle that particular goods this is what we call it as a where it is not practical to seize if it is not practical to seize then there is a remedy available that is a procedural remedy that they will have to pass an appropriate order and tell the owner or the possessor of the goods that this particular goods shall not be removed with except without the prior permission of the officer. That means the uh, removal of the goods basically, I mean uh, the law is trying to say that you have to keep the good as it is. Okay. So, until the further instructions or orders etc come, you have to keep that particular things as it is as the case may be. Further, any uh, documents, books or other things, so seized shall be retained by such officer so long as it is necessary for the purpose of examination, inquiry, etc. So, if there are uh, any books, document, material, etc. can be retained by the appropriate officer and it can be retained uh, for uh, uh, up to the time which is reasonably required and shall be returned within the period of 30 days. However, this period normally internally they have procedure for extension of times and all that. But normally they can retain this particular uh, books, documents, material for the purpose that uh, they require for the examination and etc. under this particular law. So, retention of these uh, books, documents, etc. is permitted by the law itself. When the search has been conducted, they have open and practically the open ended powers. They can uh, power to uh, break the seal, open door, uh, any premises, break open any almari, electronic device, box, receptacles, etc. In other words, uh, normally in the search operations, they have uh, uh, extraordinary powers where they can break open things for the purpose because if somebody is secreting, no. So, because if, if they feel that, oh, there are some very secret items into a particular uh, cupboard or something like that, so they want to break it open because the keys are etc say for example is not available so in that particular situation uh, they have extraordinary powers in relation to the search operations uh, they can also make copies of the books etc uh, whatever is available during the course of the proceedings so any book document material etc they can take the copies and etc kind of things if there is any goods which are already seized first of all let me tell you friends the difference between the seizure and the confiscation 
the seizure of the goods means the custody of the goods will be taken by the authorities okay but the ownership will not be transferred to the government in case of a confiscation they will take away the custody also and it will be confiscated means even the ownership of the goods will vest with the uh, government so confiscation is more serious than the seizure in case of a seizure i once again repeat that the uh, custody of the goods will be taken by the officers that means government officers but uh, uh, the ownership of the goods still remain with the taxpayer that is called as a seizer of the goods so if there is any seizer it shall be released on a provisional basis where appropriate amount of the bond has already been executed appropriate amount of the security has already been provided where uh, uh, prescribed uh, uh, arrangements have been made in this particular regards that means where the appropriate bond security uh, as in a prescribed manner has already been uh, provided okay then uh, where any goods have been seized and no notice in relation to that particular goods have been given within a period of six months. So logically for the seizure of the goods, the appropriate notices, that means a procedure, etc. should be done by the authorities. In that case, if they fail to do it, the goods shall be returned. That means practically the, the law is trying to say that you have to do the appropriate procedure for demand, recovery, adjudication, whatever that you want to do after the seizure. But if you are not doing anything, that means you have to return that particular goods as the case may be. If there is any perishable goods, if there is any hazardous goods these particular goods can be disposed of by the proper officer in the prescribed manner as the case may be and whenever the goods are etc already seized they have to prepare the appropriate inventory of the goods very natural thing this is basically the transparency what they have to do it the other powers which are associated with section 67 okay where the uh, appropriate uh, proper officer has a reason to believe that uh, there is some uh, tax evasion or something like that then for the reasons to be recorded in writing they can also seize the accounts registers documents of such person produced before him and grant a receipt for the same that means the seizure is also one of the power seizure of goods can also be carried out seizure of books document material documentary evidences can also be carried out this sub clause 12 is one special power which i call as a test purchase test purchase in the sense that let me just give you an example let's say for example there is one organization or there is say for example a supplier now this particular supplier the tax authorities have a doubt whether he is recording all the transaction properly or not so what they will do is that the appropriate officer say for example mr o will do a test okay so he will not tell that uh, i am purchasing but he will just uh, do the normal transaction that means he may come to your uh, uh, what should i say shop or he may uh, visit your website or whatever and he will just do a test purchase so he will execute a transaction then he will observe that what kind of bills you are issuing what documents you are raising and all that kind of things whether every all the gst procedures whether they are doing it properly or not okay once say for example is satisfied that okay the transaction been executed recorded uh, invoice issued properly all these kind of things if it is done properly and thereafter what he will do this officer is not going to use that particular goods okay so he has taken that particular goods and that particular goods will be returned back by the officer okay he will say that okay i was just the gst officer doing a trial on you whether you are doing everything properly or not now uh, uh, i'm giving your goods back you give me my money back okay so that kind of situation so the commission of the proper officer may cause may cause a purchase of the goods or services etc to be carried out uh, out of the business premises of that particular taxable person tax invoice bills etc will be executed okay and thereafter logically when they are already satisfied they may return the goods so purchased by such particular person okay and that particular transaction has to be reversed and that particular tax invoice etc has to be cancelled so such cancellation and etc that means entire transaction will have to be reversed so basically it is an exercise what the tax authority will practically verify that okay you are doing all these transactions into an order so that is one of the power which is already available inspection of the goods in the movement so when the goods are being transported at that point in time the person in charge of the conveyance uh, should have necessary documents and such devices as may be prescribed and that documents shall be available for the purpose of verification so basically it is uh, uh, one of the inspection uh, 
uh, with respect to the goods which are into the transportation this is how that you can understand very simple and uh, uh, whatever are the validation checks whatever are the validation checks maybe with respect to the devices sometimes as i told you that developed countries has this concept of gpu tracking devices in relation to some high value transactions so where very high value goods are been transported they may ask uh, as a legal requirement to have the tracking device into that particular vehicle so that government authorities can also track that particular things and kind of situations okay so such validations etc what is already required all properly if there is any conveyance which is intercepted by the proper officer that means they are already uh, checking that particular uh, conveyance uh, or say for example that is a vehicle in that particular case you have to produce you are duty bound to produce the documents as may be prescribed or the devices as may be required so it is basically the inspection of the goods when it is into the movement they have the appropriate powers uh, in that particular context the next power what is available under the gst is a power to arrest it is a very very serious uh, uh, power a person has committed any offense which is punishable under some law under under any law uh, where it is punishable under under any law means of course the gst only that we are talking so where it is already punishable and the person has already committed any offense in that particular situation he can also be arrested if that particular person is arrested then of course the subsequent procedure has to follow the person has to be produced before the magistrate within the 24 hours and the code of criminal procedure the normal code of criminal procedure shall be applicable and he shall be admitted to a bail in default forwarded to the custody okay and in other words the the magistrate having all these appropriate powers and that particular uh, magistrate uh, uh, can give him that particular bail and all that kind of situations in case of a non cognizable and uh, bailable offense in that means it is not uh, uh, very serious kind of uh, uh, offense see normally when we say no this is a non cognizable offense the non cognizable means it is uh, uh, where uh, uh, it is not uh, some very serious kind of offenses. In other words, there are certain offenses which are uh, straight away punishable. That means they may be non-bailable or something like that. These non-cognizable, generally understood without going to the technical details, are not so serious kind of offenses. Okay, so non-cognizable and the bailable offenses. Bailable means, of course, it is a non-bailable means a very strict kind of an offense. Bailable means little bit uh, a less stricter kind of an offense. Okay, where non-cognizable and the bailable offense, the deputy commissioner or the assistant commissioner, as the case may be, can also release that particular arrested person. In other words, uh, where uh, it is like uh, uh, non-bailable, then the magistrate will have the power. If it is a bailable, then the GST authorities have the power to release that particular person who has already been arrested under this particular clause. Section 70. Section 70 is the power to summons. The power to summons is basically to power to require someone to come for the purpose of attendance. So, there can be a notice which can be required on someone that you come and it is necessary, your attendance is necessary and uh, uh, attendance is necessary of course either to give some evidence or produce some documents etc in that particular situation. In other words, uh, uh, the GST authorities can summon someone for the purpose of uh, evidence to produce uh, document and all that kind of situation. So issuing summons, issuing summons means basically to call someone for the purpose of attendance and uh, ask for documents, details and all that kind of situations. Okay power to access the business premises this is one of the uh, very general purpose and a very beautiful power under the gst regime they have access to any place of business so joint commissioner or authorized officer have access should have the access to the business premises and they will come access your books of accounts documents computers computer programs computer software where installed in that particular computer otherwise as the case may be okay and uh, in which case they can be for it this can be for the purpose of audit security verification checks etc so basically under this particular power the GST officers will visit your premises and they will access your uh, business data and all that basically with the intention to security, verification, audit and kind of situations. Every person who is in charge of that particular uh, premises or that particular place, for example, it is office. Uh, in that particular office, the GST authorities have come and there is a staff in that particular office. So people who are present at that particular point in time, so every person who is uh, present at that particular place, that particular point in time, on demand shall make available to the proper officer or ordered party 
all necessary uh, data documents records statements books whatever so all these things are the data which they have to make it available in other words every person who is uh, present at that point in time for example the owner of that particular business is not available say for example he has gone abroad but at that point in time the manager is available so manager is duty bound to cooperate with the tax authorities and provide him all the necessary uh, documents etc uh, for that particular uh, uh, inspection or audit purposes as the case may be for which they are access the business premises the officer should assist the another uh, proper officer in other words the officers of police railways customs etc that means other government officers should of course cooperate with your gst officers if at all required i'll give you a very simple example say for example a very serious search that means uh, some search of some very big organization and there is a uh, big money which is involved there so there may be some security issues also is a possibility so maybe the gst authorities the gst officers may also summon the police department department uh, police uh, help and uh, the police the local police department the police force can also help them and they can join them for the purpose of uh, doing this particular search operations that means one government department uh, that is for example the police in my particular situation uh, should cooperate and that is something what is duty bound to be uh, done in that uh, search operations now the confiscation the confiscation friends is basically when there is certain contraventions when certain contravention took place one of the contravention very simple one where somebody receives any goods in contravention of the law okay so for example uh, uh i am transporting something and it is uh, something purely without documents or not proper documents and i am receiving that particular goods or something like that or uh, there can be a situation where say for example there is a conveyance there is a truck which is uh, transporting certain goods and when they have been asked for the inspection that okay show that book documents or sorry not the books or the documents invoices etc material etc your eva bill etc so show that particular thing that is a duty of that particular uh, uh, truck driver because he is basically in charge of that particular truck and he doesn't have any records and kind of situations so where somebody who is receiving this particular goods which is in the clear clear contravention of the law so this is not just that documentary thing that see penalty normally comes when there is certain wrong documentary like uh, here confiscation basically means actually with the goods you are doing something wrong that means uh, you are being caught red handed this is this is this is what uh, simple language and i can use it here so if you are caught red handed with the goods okay and it is uh some serious contravention of the law in that particular case the goods can be confiscated the confiscation take can take place uh in variety of the violations and most of the violations are really very clear cut kind of violations these are all your list of the violations and uh, uh, in that case the confiscation take play, can take place that means the ownership of the goods will vest with the government now now when the ownership of the goods vest with the government government will have another problem the government will think that what the government will do with that particular goods now say for example there was some clear violation clear violation goods got confiscated when goods got confiscated now it goes to the government okay it goes to the government but then what the government will do with that so ultimately friends the government will have to sell it off government will have to dispose it off so again the government will have another problem because ultimately government is not somebody who is doing business and dealing into that particular goods because government is concerned with the taxes so in that particular case whenever the confiscation is warranted there is always one option to be given that is called as a fine in lieu of the confiscation this is one concept which is uh, applicable in the indirect tax laws where any confiscation is warranted the, they have to give an option okay option to the taxpayer that uh, okay uh, you you don't want to get your goods confiscated okay you pay this much of fine if you pay this fine we are going to release your goods okay now this particular fine this particular fine has to be imposed and uh, this particular fine uh, in lieu of the confiscation has to be provided as a matter of option and thereafter the tax payer has to decide you want to pay the fine release your goods or you want to sacrifice your goods the choice is yours so the uh, whenever there is any option to pay the fine which is already provided there is always a maximum and minimum limit that means what is the option to pay the fine so what is the amount of the fine what is the minimum amount of the fine what is the maximum amount of the fine so in between that only they have to calculate uh, based on the method based on the situation the appropriate officer will say that this is the amount of the fine but this is minimum maximum amount the minimum amount of the fine is the amount of the penalty that is the minimum amount the maximum amount of the fine is uh, market value of that particular goods less the tax charged 
on that particular goods it is basically the market value of the goods but uh, excluding excluding taxes so it is minimum is the amount of the penalty that is the minimum amount of the fine is the amount of the penalty the maximum amount is a market value of the goods but excluding taxes so the between this particular range you have to give an option option to the taxpayer that uh, you want to pay the fine then uh, uh, in instead of that uh, uh, we, uh, uh, if you don't pay the fine, then uh, confiscation will of course take place. But uh, if you want to pay the fine, okay, we will not confiscate the goods. And instead of confiscation, you pay the fine and release your goods. So depending upon, but this choice, this option has to be provided uh, by the appropriate officers to the taxpayer.